Hello and welcome back to Clownfish TV. It is me, Geeky Sparkles, and I am by myself today. Neon is elsewhere. Um, we're gonna talk about animation right now. Now, if you watched our videos yesterday, uh, you were talking about the fact that Moana 2 was being filmed in Canada and it had been filmed there, but they were working on the, the animation for like a year and a half. And apparently a lot of people didn't know about it. And Neon had said, you know, it's probably because they get some kind of tax break or it's cheaper. Well, it turns out that, yeah, that seems to be the case. So we're gonna talk about that. Uh, before we get into it any further, please like and subscribe and I'll give you a woohoo, woohoo. And now we're gonna look at this article. Now this article comes from The Hollywood Reporter. If you, if you missed the announcement from Disney on Wednesday, they're suddenly bringing Moana 2 out of nowhere um, and they're bringing it to theaters. Now, Moana 2 was set to be a like Disney Plus or one of, those, one of the Disney Channel's shows. It was gonna be an episodic show, um, probably with a little, the animation was probably pretty good, but it wasn't probably to like theater level quality. Disney needed to pull something out of its rear end to razzle dazzle shareholders. And they're like, we need to give them something. What can we give them? Because everybody already knows this year, you know, a couple movies look promising, but not everything in last year was a dud. Well, Moana's big, they all liked Moana. Let's just make the show into a movie and then just announce it so that it looks like we're doing something. And that's what they did. They announced that this Moana 2 film is, is the show is being repurposed into a movie and it's coming out in November. They don't even have, you know, Dwayne Johnson completely signed on yet to redo the voice of Maui because they had somebody else in there for the show. So they're trying to get the voice actors back and they're scrambling trying to find that, but this is coming out in November. Um, and of course with this, people are asking, why is everything going into Canada? Well, that's where this article comes into play. So. The Hollywood Reporter has how Hollywood's budget crunch is fueling a Canadian tune boom. And it's for the reasons that we said we think it is. Animation north of the border is thriving as Hollywood searches for affordable content as the peak TV era fades. There's a concerted effort for us to lean into higher quality work. So we're going to go to Canada for higher quality work. Um, reading between the lines, basically people are saying that they want to go there because there's no unions. And I think that was what they were talking about in the article we looked at yesterday. And uh, they don't have to deal with the activist mindset as much. I think that would depend on where you go, honestly. I think you're going to run into that. You could run into that in Canada easily. But um, I guess it's not as bad there. So that's, but that saves them a lot of time and hassle. So they said, as the streaming giants cut back on spending and Hollywood recovers from strikes of 2023, one sector of the industry has continued to thrive animation. Um, I'm pretty sure too, that some of the animation things are going to be up, like their contracts are going to be up soon, uh, that they might end up striking in the next year or two as well. Um, nowhere is this more evident than in Canada, which offers a fully established industry and a wealth of talent all at an affordable price. This is right here, affordable price. Okay. People in Canada say they've seen an uptick in activity thanks to cost-conscious producers looking for more bang for their buck, not to mention other advantages like currency savings, because the Canadian dollar is 74 cents to the US dollar, speed and efficiency, experienced local talent, and cross-border proximity to Los Angeles. So they're close, relatively close to LA. They could pay, you know, what they pay here a dollar, they could pay 74 cents there. And they're also going to have things like, you know, union issues they don't have to deal with. And I think like we saw with a lot of the MCU films and shows, there's probably options where you get money for doing their help fund it or something like that, which I think they talk about later. They said budgets have come down. We need to go back to our creative approaches and how we achieve a look and a result on screen that works within a particular budget. Michael Hefferon, president and COO at Vancouver based mainframe studios. They said they worked with Hollywood for years and they gave Canadian animators international ambition and scale. So now um, TV is beginning to fade and the high cost live action content animators, animators in Canada can provide same, some kind of high end shows, you know, for a lower cost, what they're saying. Rather than play the volume game and spread your chips across model pieces of content, producers are doubling down on fewer projects, which Bob Iger said, um, with the spectacle that viewers demand. Okay, you can create that spectacle with visual effects and animation. This is Monsters, Aliens, Robots, Zombies, Mars, a technology and visual studio based in Toronto, which is, it's interesting because a lot of the VFX workers are unionizing. And I agree with them on that one because the stuff they were demanding 
was ridiculous. But now they're saying not just animation, but visual effects they are going to start sending to Canada because it's more cost effective. So that's, that's concerning for people. Uh, quantity over quality, which is again, what Bob Iger was saying, which is the opposite of what Chapek had said. Uh, they're saying, okay, here, here, this is what Neon was joking about yesterday. Leveraging Canadian animation tax credits available at a rate of 25% on qualified labor expenditure is also in the mix at U.S. entertainment giants embrace new business models, okay? With Hollywood trying to figure out exactly the direction they'll go with content, with theatrical content, with streaming content, and with originals and franchises, a natural part of that discussion is Canada with its tax credit and wonderful talent pool that Cinesite works with. This is a COO of VFX Place, an animation house. And you see, you keep seeing VFX animation. We saw, you know, these tax credits and help. We saw this over and over again. Like Captain Marvel, the budget was offset. So it didn't have to make as much because it got tax breaks. Thor, you know, Love and Thunder was filmed places because it got that tax breaks. We keep seeing TV shows are going places because the, the government there will pay you to bring your movie there and give you tax breaks. Okay, because even the money they're giving you back, you're going to spend more money than that going there. And again, and the next place might go there because they saw your place go there. Um, they said that their Cinesites Montreal studio became the production hub for artists working on is a Waju. It's good. I thought that was going to be a movie, but it turned out to be a six part series that's coming this month. All right. This project marked the first time Disney Animation tapped an indie studio to work on the kind of content it usually produces in house. So it's not just Moana. Here, another one of their shows that are coming to Disney Plus that they're talking about was also done in Canada. So I'm starting to see a pattern here. If I were people in Burbank, I'd be a little concerned, all right? We've got strong, capable companies that are world leaders in animation space, plus educational institutions feeding talent into their pipeline. Um, they said, we're doing work for productions all around the world, not to mention our own domestic productions, okay? They get money back. They have a bunch of people there. A lot of them that we had know with uh, Moana, they said it was likely non-union. And they're trying to push for quality over quantity and they can do it at 74 cents on the dollar. Okay. Where do you think that, that they're going to spend their money? Plus, they're also talking about how in Canada, since they don't have like a big Disney or Pixar there, that different studios will collaborate together to get stuff done on time and on budget. So they'll work together, like this one place, they they had Ontario Studios join forces for the SpongeBob SquarePants film. And they worked with Sinking Ship Entertainment and Pipeline Studios to get the full CG animation and spin VFX to get the live action VFX parts. And they still came in on time and under budget, or at least to budget. All right, so they're, 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 they were not too afraid to work together. So they're going to work together to be a better option to take everybody else down. So we're going to see more and more of this probably happening. Um, we already know that DreamWorks and stuff was closing things down to go to Canada. A lot of these places are taking stuff to Canada because it's not far for them to go and they can save so much money and they have people already in place. The studios are already there. You can do it. You could outsource them. And you, you know, or even if they want to keep their own studios for the big projects, they're going to outsource more and more to these places so they can get more done, less expensive. And then they have streaming content, whether it be, you know, Disney or Netflix or these other places. They're talking about Netflix is doing it too. They're all kind of doing this. And with Moana too, they just were doing a show that they're turning into a movie. So what's to say they won't do this with other projects? If I were people, I'd be a little concerned because Canada's, they, they have it cheaper, they are faster, and you get tax breaks. And all, all Hollywood sees is, oh, we can make more money. It's going to be cheaper, it's going to be faster, and we can make more money. They don't give two shits about, you got, you're a problem. You, you ask for money. You, ask, you want contract negotiations, cost them all kinds of money this year. They don't want that to happen again. So if you guys want to go on strike and something like that, then they already have other stuff in progress someplace else. It doesn't, not everything doesn't go to a, to a halt. It doesn't all stop, stop because you guys are striking. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that's what they're thinking because at the end of the day, all they care about is money and they care about themselves making money and their company moving forward, making money. And that's what they're going to do. So anyway, there it is. Please like, and subscribe and I'll talk to you later.